Let's go back to 1986 in the Wayback Machine, Coach. Look at this group of players and look what they have turned into. A lot of people who've had great success coaching or running teams. And then, of course, Jay Billis, who loves to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Well, you know, I'm, I'm just proud of, of that group. And, and there could have been even more names. You know, Billy King was the president of the you know, 76ers. And so you can go down the line with our guys, you know, that in the success they've had after their playing career. And that's what college is for. I mean, not everyone's going to go on and be a professional basketball player. But there is an opportunity for you to transition into other other things that, you, that you've been interested in in college. And I think that's what you've seen that group do. And the 86 team got to the Final Four. And it is, for Coach K, for the Duke program, really put it on the map. How significant that appearance, although it didn't end in a championship, that came a few years later. But the fact that you were in the Final Four and put the program on the map, did you have any idea at the time when you got to the Final Four what it meant for Duke basketball? Uh, you know, we didn't. I think at the time we were all just, you know, we were caught up in the moment and what we were trying to accomplish, and that was win a national championship. And uh, for us, you know, we had started off, we were 11 and 17 my freshman year. Mm -hmm. So four years later, we're 37 and 3 and, and you, you know, competing for a national championship. So it was an amazing ride. And so that's the thing that you remember. Look but at you, that guy. <laughs> Look at that guy. <laughs> what, what, Danny what, Ferry with hair. That's right, about <laughs> Danny, with the three, but the th three guys, you know, myself and the two guys on the right, for instance, and Jay. Billis, we'll all get together next week. We have a uh, 86 reunion. So the 28th, we'll all get together and, you know, reminisce, tell some stories, tell a few lies, you know. <laughs> and it, it, but it'll, it'll be a great time. But uh, that's, that's, those are the moments you cherish. Not only did we have a great run and, and career at Duke, but the, the friends we've become, you know, through that whole process. You know, we're lifelong friends. It's a brotherhood. Yeah. So we're, we're so close. I'm looking forward to seeing them next week. Did you guys aspire to be where you are then? Like, and was those the conversations in your locker room? Like, I want to be a head coach? Well, the only one that I, I could have said is doing what he was was practicing when we were in college is Jay Billis. Because <laughs> he would always grab the spoon and shove it in your face at the end of the game. And he's doing interviews instead of the people that are interviewing us for the in local media. So you could see him headed in that direction. But the rest of us, you know, I was uncertain. You know, I, I think Tommy Amaker, you probably could see it in him some, mm -hmm. even when we were playing kind of a coach on the floor. Uh, the rest of us, I think we kind of just transitioned into it based on, you know, how our careers was going. We may have gotten more interested in it when we left college and then kind of fell into it that way. How much is the impact of playing for Coach K leading to what we're seeing there with that? How many of those guys went on to become leaders in the game of basketball, including yourself? Uh, I mean, everyone he coaches, he mentors in, into being a leader. I mean, whether you end up staying in our profession or going outside of it in corporate America, you know, he stresses that every day in practice, every, you know, every meeting that we have some kind of way that's coming across in our program so he's grooming you for that you know I, I like to say when I first left Duke and became a head coach I didn't realize how well out prepared I was for those moments that the coaching part sitting that 18 inches over is a big difference but everything else you're so well prepared for because he allowed you throughout your program to touch everything like he didn't just you know micromanage you he allowed you to grow in every aspect which was an amazing thing for i think all of us in our careers this year watching that group with zion and rj and cam i think was probably the most we heard coach k talk about how much he enjoyed and had fun with it with the team what do you remember as coach k was sort of becoming what we know as coach k because you had him early before he was <laughs> before he was coach k well you know he was always coach k to me <laughs> but I, you know for i think for us you know it just just the journey of what we all had to go through to to put the program you know where it is now i mean you're talking about you know 11 and 17 as a freshman as i mentioned earlier to see that transformation to winning 30 plus games was amazing and, and and there are a lot of ups and downs during that as you know when i mean it's hard to win it's hard to win and 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 we found a way to do that consistently over the years and that's to through a lot of credit to coach k i mean it's one thing to get there but as you know it's another thing you know three days three decades later looking at that and he's still there i mean now he's done a phenomenal job and i think we all look at it with a sense of pride that we were fortunate to be a part of it how emotional was it for you to coach against him? Mm. I know he was very emotional after that game. That was one thing that really stayed with me, that yeah. he couldn't even enjoy the win because he knew what that game meant to you and the program you're trying to now build. Uh, but what did it mean for you emotionally? Uh, it was a long 48 hours before <laughs> we played the game. You could see in the brackets that it could possibly happen, but then there's another thing when it actually is there. 
And then you have all the pageantry of everything that, that we've gone through together, he and I, because we kind of grew up together. You know, he's, he's you know, one of my best friends, and uh, you know, he was my coach and my mentor, but at this stage, just a really good friend, and, and now you're having to face him. Uh, that's difficult, and uh, I think you could see in his face and in some of his comments, and I feel the same way, you know, about him and, and feel the same way about that situation. I think we both got through it the best we could. I mean, it's, we've always talked about the team that wins when you're playing against one of your former players or coaches. You never really win because you feel sorry for them. It's someone that you, you know, was a big part of their life. And if you lose it, of course, you're not going to feel good anyway because who wants to lose? So you, you sure you it's, it's a no win. You sure about that? You were going to feel that well, bad. Well, I'm sure he has the bragging rights, which is a good thing. But, but it's, it's, just, it's, just, it's just an awkward situation, yeah. Yeah. I think, for, for people that, you know, you know, mean so much to you. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and like I said, that friendship is something that, uh, you know, will never change whether you win or lose that game, of course. It just makes it more complicated. Well, over time, basketball fans got to either love or hate Duke. But with your program, Coach, <laughs> it's hard to hate the way your team played yeah. this year. And it looks like that program is headed in the right direction. Thanks so much for spending some time with us. For more great videos from the MSG 150, check out right there. And remember, our show is on Monday through Thursday, 8 to 10.30 p.m. on MSG Network and MSG Go.